Hi, welcome to Eckington. I'm stood outside Eckington Parish Church, which I believe is the oldest building in Eckington. So I'm going to be having another look around the Moss Valley today, starting in Eckington. So last week I went on a, a guided walk, you could call it, um, as part of the uh, Heritage Open Days. And it started from Eckington Church and it was organised by Laney. And Laney and Steve did a great job at taking us down the Moss Valley, doing a circular walk, looking at all the old industry and all the old things in the wood as part of the Open Day. So a quick piece of housekeeping for anyone who's not familiar with the area. Moss Valley sits to the southeast of Sheffield, right on the border between Sheffield and North East Derbyshire. And the section of the Moss Valley I'm going to be looking at today is just west of Eckington, up to the small hamlet of Ford. So I'm no stranger to the Moss Valley or Eckington. I've done videos from here before. I did the Penny Engine Railway, which is just behind me here. I'm not going to cover that today though, I'll mention it because it's quite relevant but I did do a video that featured that line in its entirety so I'll put the link for that in the description. Straight after leaving Eckington, just going down the hill from the church, we had on the right hand side um, a gasometer. If anyone doesn't know what a gasometer is, those big um, steel drums you used to see, they disappeared I think well, there's been ones in Sheffield up till recently. So this is Gas House Lane that we've been walking down since the church, um, which is no coincidence. We passed where I said there was that gasometer. It's where it gets its name. So straight away, the first thing that we come across is what would have been called Park Mill. And I'll just show you the, the goit that fed uh, that fed the mill and then we'll go and have a look at the ruins. So this is the moss, this is the, uh, if you call it a river these days, it's just a trickle in places now. Let's just go and have a look down at the mill, where I understand there's also a couple of cottages as well. So a couple of sets of gate posts. You can see, just walking around, you can see plenty of foundations, can't you? And there's the moss down there. There's the bridge, we've just been stood at the other side of that bridge. We're just behind us here. I think somebody mentioned last week that this was part of the cottage rather than as part of the mill. I don't know if that's true or not. So this path that we're walking on at the moment, this was part of the Penny engine line. In that direction, went back through to Rennyshaw, joined up with the old Midland railway line. And up here, terminated at the Plumley Colliery, but we'll get into that as we get further up. So we're walking down what would be the south side of the Moss Valley at the moment. The River Moss is just on that side, down there somewhere. So the Moss, the Moss Valley was a plentiful and reliable source of water. And as a result, we see a lot of industry down here. We've got quite a few coal mines, coal mine workings. Uh, we've also, that we'll see, one of the things that interests me the most, I think, is the number of dams. And I believe there was eight old wheels and dams that were all from old forges, sickle and scythe works. And uh, not, nothing remains, I don't, well, there, I know there's not none of those wheels that are remaining, but we're going to see some evidence today of some of the old dams where the river was dammed in various points to, uh, just to kind of harness that uh, the force of the water, just to store it back to release through the wheels. Coming up to the Selden Seam old engine house, which is probably the most famous landmark uh, in the Moss Valley. It's the one you see all the photographs of. But all across here, on the left hand side, we've got evidence. We've got coke ovens, um, pit spoils, all sorts of things. There's old 
mine shafts. Um, so let's go and have a look. You can see this one quite easily from the path. And there's the brickwork. So it's got a coating on. I can't remember what that stuff's called now. But it gone all the way around. I mean, the bricks have disappeared over this side. Like someone was explaining, it'd be like a dome, a dome shape kiln, I suppose. Coke oven. But yeah, a little bit of uh, circular brick left there. I mean, there's a few more of these, so we'll we'll keep keep our eye out. And here's a much clearer example. Yeah, so there we go. Same sort of thing, but a bit bigger. And we can see oh, it's covered in spiders' webs. Get out. Sorry. We can see the layers of bricks there, look. There's a gap between the bricks. Fascinating. So this one feels more like, more like a curve. You can actually feel you're in a, a recess. Something the other side as well. Let's go and have a look. Right. Look at this one. See, this one does actually, you can make out the shape from the old dome. Look at the texture on those bricks. The bricks had some heat on it, hasn't it? That one. I think they're fascinating. And we've not done yet. There's another one here. There's a right little collection. We're getting through with the nettles. Same thing. That looks like a smaller one, that. It's got a smaller, smaller circumference to it. I bet there's literally, there's, I bet there's so many of these hidden in here. See the old pit spoil heaps coming up on the left hand side now, so that means that we're almost at the seldom seen engine house. Now, the great thing about that walk I did last week is just the knowledge. There were people on there who grew up in this area and so they can remember it going back decades. And you can still remember still remember some of the industry or some of the, the, the waste of the industry that's gone now. So it was great just to get a different perspective. So as you're walking down here, you've got to be careful. You don't miss this, the star attraction of the Moss Valley, I think. A seldom seen engine house. And in the years I've been coming here, this is noticeably more um, overgrown. More so this time of year as well. There we go, appearing. The enormity of the scale of this place just always, always blows me away no matter how many times I've trudged up this trail before. You can't go inside, but there's plenty of windows to stick your head, to stick your head through. And one of them has been vandalised though. If you look at this, someone's been and cut away. Uh, the railings and the window, so. We have a better view. You can see the plinths where the engine used to be. So this has been registered as a, as a national monument by English heritage. And I do believe it's the only remaining a vertical steam engine house um, in existence. And of course this would have been, this is the pumping house Plum Lit Colliery. And this would have been the destination of that penny engine 
Penny Engine Railway. But we've got up here, now again this was a discussion by the group that I was, uh, was with last week on how this structure lined up with the engine house and was the engine somehow connected via an aerial ropeway or mechanism to this yeah, look at the buttresses on the end of there <laughs> mixture of red brick and whatever that brick is Now I did get to the top of here last time I was here and I came down on my backside. But look at this, look at this archway. Well not an archway, but this curved curved brick line in there. It's almost like it's the bottom of something, isn't it? So did that go all the way round? Look at that big steel. I'm reaching up here, I'm I'm kind of below it, it's as far as up as I can I can reach. Um, big steel fit in there, broken off. Same at the other side. So I'm clinging on to the, the side, it's very, very loose, very loose ground this. And it's quite a, quite a drop down there. And I ain't the best with my balance. Big steel rod there as well. So this, whatever this curve, whatever this, looks like it went all the way around. So I've managed to scramble up there somehow, looking straight across at the engine house. We're about level with that first, um, the first arch window there, that opening. It's probably not a window. Uh, just come up to have a look at this. A little opening there. Yeah, I'm really intrigued. Someone was suggesting this could have been the top of a drift mine, the top of a shaft. But there's some kind, yeah, definitely some kind of curved bricks. I'm just wondering how I'll get down from here now. It's probably easier to carry on going up. You can see the start of an arch on here. Look, looking at the direction of those bricks there. I hope you appreciate me scrambling up these these bankings. No phone signal out here. No one will hear me scream. So now we're a bit higher. We're just about almost level with that top archway opening now on the engine house. And that's a sheer drop to whatever is on, on the top of here. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing this when I came and did the Penny Engine Railway. I was having a look at all these, all these uh, big gaps. Like they've been carved out, probably more coke ovens or, or something, or it could be top of shafts, so I really don't know. Yeah, I remember this now. So just, this is, this, we're still on the top of that hill, the other side of uh, the Seldom Seam. And this big, big piece of stonework is this a drift a drift mine there's definitely definitely something here got bricks all the way around there's something being blocked off here it's a bit dark in here piece of that's a huge huge bolt sticking out of the ground isn't it yeah they're all the way along look I've come down the fun way that's a great view isn't it looking through this old ruined structure through to the engine house seldom seen so we're going to be seeing more things connected with that and connected to Plumley Colliery as we go around and we also say goodbye to the Penny Engine Railway. As far as I know, from all sources that I've seen, that did end at the uh, engine house. 
However, there was from there, I'm assuming this is how they got the, the coal down or up, whichever way, um, a tramway that ran along the south side of the, uh, of the moss. Um, we'll come up to, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as we get further up the valley. Right, so a couple of things to get us teeth into here. We're approaching the site of the, of the Lower Carlton Dam, which was the uh, colliery pond for the, the Plumley Colliery. This bridge is a later addition, although it's looking a little bit old itself at the moment. But just here, you can see the old remains, the foundations, was an old pack horse bridge. So if we go down here, we have got some remains, I believe, of what of the old dam, dam wall. So like I say, the moss was dammed in various places to hold hold the water back so it could be used. A lot of pipe work. Just laying there, broken pipes. Ah, oh, look at that little culvert. Oh. Where are you coming from? So this is the flow of the moss here. It's no more than a beck really, is it? So I can even walk through it just to get to the bottom of this pack horse, little pack horse bridge. So if you do come, if you've been to the Moss Valley, you might recognize this little location. It's a very, very popular spot. Let's go and have a look at this. Let's go and have a look at the remains of this dam. And I'm assuming this is this is the dam. Got more pipe work. It's a brickwork there. So there is definitely a substantial stone structure here. And I'll show you when we get on top. But I believe that banking is forms part of the dam. So obviously it's been dammed upstream. The water's been held that side. So we'll be stood where we're stood now. We're underneath the dam. And they're not huge dams, a couple of meters high at the most, from what I can tell uh, from the surrounding architecture. So I've come up the banking now. Banking, quite obviously, a body of earth that would have been part of the, of the damming of, of the water. So, water that side. And there is the, we've just been down there looking at the remains of the dam, which I'm assuming would have just been the, the middle section there. But it's also the scene of quite a tragic story in what would have been the pond, just the other side of there. In 1895, three children were playing on the frozen Lower Carlton Dam when they fell through the ice. 24-year-old Alfred Williamson, who was working at the nearby seldom seen engine house at Plumley Colliery, heard the screams of the children and rushed to help them. Alfred heroically entered the water but could not swim. Tragically, all four perished in the icy waters that day. They were all buried in the nearby Eckington Cemetery. However, it was only recently that the children were given their own headstones. And somewhere around here would have been the route of that tramway that I've just mentioned that ran down the south side of the valley that met up with the incline tramway further up. Now that's been, I understand that tramway's been gone since the late part of the 1800s. So it's probably been, um, it's pro there's probably no trace of even an alignment or a banking. But we do have this channel down here, which I understand is, uh, is a goit possibly down to the the engine house i'm not sure um but this would have come from a dam further up the valley let's just have a look down here i'm sorry it's really dark down here really thick tree coverage we've got tall trees but look at these big big stones here i said this this was uh, we believe this to be a goit looking straight down there that looks to me i mean this here would have been the lower Carlton Dam, right in front of us here, all this land. And this, between these two stones, could this have been a spillway? 
looks like the ones that you get on on a canal doesn't it I'm just catching the overflow from the goit so there's the moss down there that dam we've just been looking at is only there 20 yards up that way so this would have all been part of that dam but let's have another closer look at these these stones these stones here because it looks like look at these again sorry it's, it's really dark it does look like these would have been used as a sluice to hold the water back you can see the bottom the bottom of what the would have been the goit there at the bottom look there's the stones so we're climbing up quite high above the river way down there in that gorge and i'm not sure how far these dams came but you can definitely see ridges on the side of the bank and i don't want to go too far down because that is hell of a drop down there but the next dam and little mini pond that we'll uh, that we'll see is called the footrail dam and i'll tell you a little bit more about that when i get down there somehow what have i just seen on the side here in a precarious place some kind of valve or something some turning mechanism Looks like it had a wheel on it at some stage. I can't see any writing or anything on there. I can see a pipe. There's a pipe, look, the other side of the bank in there. Uh, the other side of the valve, sorry, on the bank in. Now, there are pipes and sewers all the way down this valley. Maybe it's something to do with those. Now, I mentioned that little tramway that ran from the Seldom scene down to... Um, down to the bottom of this incline tramway, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Now, this is where it would, somewhere here where it would have made a sharp turn over the footrail dam, just through here. So there, I can see the footrail dam, just trying to get over to the other side of the river. So this is footrail dam. Now this is a later dam than some of the other dams that we'll see today. That's like a water spillway down there. Let's just have a walk around the front. So obviously the water would have been the other side. The water would have been upstream to where we are now. There's a moss flowing gently round. It's found its, its own route around there, but look this dam goes all the way around yeah i just mentioned about the tramway came if i'm looking back towards seldom seam that way came down here and then did a sharp turn whether or not it was the same line or whether it was the wagons were swapped over it then went up a sharp uh, steep incline that i'll uh, get to in a moment that tramway ceased in the light in the late 1800s and after that date this dam was built along the route along along uh, the route of that tramway so this was a later dam I don't know the date off the top of my head yeah, we've got a looks like a piece of rail as well there built into the dam There's the, uh, there's the dam from the top. So that tramway carried on straight up the hill. You can see uh, it's not really straight on this bit, but it would have been at the time of the tramway. I'm not going to go up there because I'm not going that way. I've got some footage though from last year, April time, I think it was. So here's the incline and cutting of that old tramway. Now we don't know if it was powered by an engine house at the top or if it was simply gravity fed. 
but the alignment is still clearly visible to see. And on the old National Library of Scotland maps, we can see the old alignment of that tramway. So something interesting on this even older map, I mentioned about the tramway that linked up to the old Penny Engine Railway. So here's our Penny Engine Railway on the bottom right there. And there's our incline that we've just been looking at. But look, we've got a linking line that goes from the bottom of that incline down towards the seldom scene. But I'm going to crack on now, keep following the route of the moss and we should be heading up next towards the uh, the field wheel dam. So this would have been, we would have been stood inside at the minute, the footrail, the dam, the water behind the footrail dam that we've just seen. Next up should be field, <coughs> excuse me, field wheel dam, which isn't far. We've got this, oh, that's lethal. That's very slippy. I have to be careful getting up here. I want to go and have a look at that culvert. But look at this. Look at this little archway. I don't know if it's a culvert or if it's something to do with the mines. I don't think it's a culvert, is it? It goes down for a start. It's really dark, you can tell. GoPro's no good in the dark. For the second week running, I've gone out thinking I wouldn't be needing my uh, my torch. I think I should just fetch it wherever I'm going, to be honest. Bit of a rocky area there. I'm just going to take a few stills. Um, it's far too dark to do any filming, any closer than that. I think that's a passageway, personally. I don't think that's a culvert for water, because it, it goes down inside. I think that's something, a tunnel to somewhere else. So we were stood, we was on the footpath up there and I can see this down here and I'm glad I've been able to get close to it because and I mentioned there was a tramway but it didn't go this far so I don't think this is going to be um, in situ but this looks like really old rail, big length of rail just sneaking around. old tramway rail look at that looks like it's not but it looks like someone's put a sleeper there doesn't it and all the way down here i don't think i really don't think this is where this rail would have been but i did mention that tramway didn't i and that tramway stopped just a very short distance just there we've got some kind of old light as well there Indicate a light by the looks of it, orange lens. Oh, that's off. Yep. That's the view from the riverside. That's still got the holes in there. When the joiners were in place, that is so corroded that I, I, I don't even begin to wonder how old this piece of rail is. Dam wall here, a bit of concrete. Is this, oh, that's my bearings. Is this, would this be field wheel dam or Upper Carlton Dam as it was known? Bit of a drop there, isn't it? Getting bolts, bolts still in place there. So I'm just underneath that dam damn wall so i was at the top there i've just come down for a look again i'm sorry it's so dark it's actually the sun was out when i started this walk today an hour later it's completely vanished it's actually dark outside never mind under the trees but yeah it's definitely definitely expecting quite a bit of water here aren't they the way they've uh, bricked up that wall tree growing out the top now this is the dam I thought was the field dam, field wheel dam. And in fact, to be honest, it's only there where we've just been looking at that, that dam. Um, so maybe there was two, they're right next to each other, they're virtually in line. So maybe it was, a, it was a double dam or something, perhaps. But here's the ruins. Wow. 
slippy this stone's gonna be very is the answer all right just want to come and have a look there's some oh these stones are lethal look at the wall there I don't know if these dams were demolished or just came down um, by themselves. Probably demolished. That's pretty thick, isn't it, that? Look at all this. So I'm going to say this was the field dam. Upper Carlton Dam as well, I've seen it called. I am finding all this old, these old ruins mind-blowing. Another little bridge. Again, it's this is a, a steel bridge, but it's it's quite obvious it's had some past history. Looking at the old ends of the bridge. So this is the point where the path on the south and the path on the north diverge. It's all one path down towards down towards Ford from here. So we've gone past Field um, Field Dam, the Upper Carlton Dam, or Field Wheel, whatever, whatever you want to call it. We're coming up to the Never Fear. And here we go. This one is still, it's still dammed. It's still got water in. It's used for uh, for fishing. Now, the moss is down there somewhere, the other side. I can hear it in the distance, just trickling past but this is up so I'm assuming this is going to have been fed from a goit further up the valley so interesting backstory on how this uh, this dam got its name and this was perfect illustrated last week by the boxer Clinton Woods when we were walking through here he came past and gave us a bit of a talk on how it got its name and it's from the workers who saw a ghost and it was a ghost of an angel it's a heron taking off there he obviously doesn't like the story. So it was a ghost. It was a ghost of an angel who held out its wings and said, never fear. And that name stuck. And that's how the never fear dam got its name. Lovely new surface they've put down on this section of path. It's been notorious, this section, for all the time I've been coming down here, just how bad it is, even in summer. And if I think right back to that first video I did on the Moss Valley, brand new trail shoes on, I think I'd only just got them, and they were completely submerged. They were certainly christened that day. So I believe this is Soft Dam, spelled S-O-U-G-H, but pronounced Soft. And I'm assuming that will be the Goit, down to the Nether Fear Dam. It doesn't go anywhere, does it? But it looks like it was definitely a channel at one time of day. Look, it's even got a, it's even got that there. So we can see again. This is obviously this is how they've been able to control how much water has been been held back with sluice gates, some of which. Are down there they've come off but we can see if I come through the nettles we can see some are still in uh, in place look I don't know if that's the original one but there's a dam and wheel here that dates back all the way back to the 1790s so that's a great little piece of history there isn't it So we're just coming up to the last dam we're going to see today. Dam slash pond slash reservoir, whatever you want to refer to it as. And this is the Ford, Ford Dam. This is one still in water. And you can see, as well, it's a more conventional grass, grass dam that you might see still in use. Again, nothing left of the uh, the industry. Do 
quite a nice setting this isn't it it's usually quite quite busy with fishermen there's no one here today assuming this is the goit to uh to the ford dam just going off there there's the bridge in if you fancy a little bit of refreshment before you uh, head back towards Eckington. But it's only 10.30 so I think that's a little too early for a, for a cider. I covered this on my last Moss Valley video but I can't pass by without just giving this a mention and just poking my head around the corner. The old starfish site from World War II bunker let's go down have a look hopefully there's no one in covered in broken glass bit of a tip a lot more. It's a lot worse for litter than the last time I was here. Be careful where we're standing. So starfish site. So it says a war bunker, but it's not what you think bit of an interesting twist to the story so the Moss Valley was a mock-up of the Don Valley heavy industry Sheffield and they used to light up this valley as a decoy to try and um, coax away the enemy bombers into thinking that this was Sheffield so it was somebody's job to come and basically light the lanterns down the valley I'm just heading back, not far away from the church now, so that's the end of today's walk and video. So I've not covered everything, I suppose there is some, still some more material in here for another video someday. Fascinating to see some bits of the valley I've not seen before, I found some real gems today. So cheers for Laney, who, uh, who contacted me, inviting me to, uh, to take part in the walk last week. It was absolutely fantastic, I learnt so much, I learnt so much from the, the people on the walk as well, because there's people imparting knowledge that they had as well so I think everyone was learning off each other so if you're new to my videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button leave me a comment if you've got any information that I've uh, not been quite so sure of today so as always take care and I'll see you soon sorry I forgot about this on the way down this wall it's got numbers on and letters on gas house lane 77 there 32 etc i believe this wall was taken from one of the foundries in this area and all the bricks were numbered so that's being repurposed